So I want to discuss today, what is the Haftorah? Or in Ashkenazic Hebrew, Haftorah. So Haftarah or Haftorah. Is it half a Torah? Of course not. That doesn't even make sense. But it is a question that I'm asked a lot, especially when B'nai Mitzvah students start tutoring and start their preparation and discover that they have to learn both a Torah portion and a Haftarah portion. We know that the Torah comes from the five books of Moses or that they share that name and they provide us with the weekly Torah portion or scriptural reading that we read and study and share during Shabbat services. Much of the rest of the Bible, the books of the prophets and the writings is not read as regularly, but its message is also important. So parts of it are read throughout the year on Shabbat and holidays. This is the Haftarah, the second scriptural reading that follows the Torah reading. Why are there two biblical readings during the Shabbat and holiday worship service? Isn't one enough? Well, it's not known for certain when or why the practice of chanting a Haftorah portion after a Torah reading started. There are many theories about the origin of this custom, although there is little hard evidence to support any of them. Some scholars suggest that the Haftarot, which is the plural of Haftarah, were introduced in ancient Palestine in the second century BCE, when the Syrians had forbidden the reading of the Torah. Others argue that this couldn't be the beginning of the ritual because it is likely that the Syrians would have prohibited that reading too. That all of the reading of the entire Hebrew Bible would have not been allowed, not just the Torah. So that doesn't really make sense. Others believe that the tradition of the Haftarah reading might have been created in 132 CE by Rabbi Akiva, in response to the Roman Emperor Hadrian's ban on Torah reading. Both of these, theory, these theories suggest that the Haftarah was created and developed during times of persecution, that it was a response to attempts to limit Jewish observance and teaching. But there are those who wanna consider another viewpoint, perhaps a more positive one that puts the Haftorah in a more positive light, not as a reaction, but as a way of bringing more text into our lives. This perspective states that a custom developed to read the Torah and then to conclude the reading with a special message for the week. This might have to do with the meaning of the word Haftorah itself. It comes from a Hebrew root that has multiple meanings, but could mean to conclude. This may have initially begun with adding a Haftarah reading on festivals and on some of the special Shabbat weekends that we observe. It might have been put there to provide special messages for the season at the conclusion of the Torah reading. Then perhaps it spread from there eventually becoming a fixture of the Torah service, not only on festivals and special Shabbat weekends, but on each and every Shabbat. That's a mouthful to say all of those words quickly. But whatever the origin of the Haftarah, it became, as Professor Michael Fishbane noted in his introduction to the JPS commentary on the Haftarot, one of the three components of the public recitation of scripture in the ancient synagogue. He describes those three as Torah, the law, Haftorah, the words of the prophets that provided moral instruction and uplift, and yes, the sermon, which drew on the authority of the rabbis to interpret them both. That is similar to what we often find in a synagogue service today, Torah reading, Haftorah reading, and a sermon or Devar Torah to help synthesize the two. Of course, every service is different. Some communities embrace only one scriptural reading and regularly choose Torah 
over half Torah. Some read both. Some read neither one. There is no right or wrong, just different. Okay, back to the Haftarah. How are these weekly prophetic messages chosen? When we read from the Torah, we simply turn to the next portion. There is an order to follow as we read and reread the text each year. But the Haftarah? Sometimes the connection between the Haftarah and Torah is clear and obvious. Sometimes it is more subtle and complex and difficult to detect. It may have to do with the fact that in antiquity, there was no prescribed list of Haftarah readings and passages were originally selected arbitrarily by randomly opening a scroll of one of the prophetic books and reading whatever happened to be there. This is evidenced by recommendations found in the Talmud that certain passages should not be chosen for Haftorah readings, indicating that at least to that time, a regular list for the year's readings did not exist. Later, traditions did develop regarding the reading of a particular passage with each weekly Torah portion. A Talmudic text suggests that a Haftorah should resemble the Torah reading of the day. The Haftorah is often linked to the theme or genre from the Torah reading. And then of course, the connection is clear. For example, on the week when the Torah reading features the song sung by the Israelites when they witnessed the parting of the sea at the Exodus story and they stood there and praised God, the Haftorah includes another song, the Song of Deborah, sung in response to her military victory. Both include songs of praise. Another example, when the Torah reading relates the story of the 12 scouts sent by My Moses to spy out the land of Canaan, the Haftarah reading focuses on the two spies sent by Joshua to scope out Jericho in advance of his campaign to conquer the city. Additionally, the Haftarah for a given holiday is often linked closely to a core theme of that holiday's observance or captures something that links to it later on in the Bible. For example, the theme of God's readiness to forgive sin underlies the choosing of the story of Jonah for the afternoon of Yom Kippur. And on Sukkot, we read of a futuristic Sukkot when the world is perfect by reading a passage from Zechariah on that holiday. Many times though, the Haftorah bears no relationship to that day's Torah reading and is a little bit harder to relate to. But sometimes the Haftorah gives us the name of that special Shabbat. For example, before Purim, we read a special Torah passage that ends with the destruction of Amalek, the bad guy. The Haftorah too recounts the tale of an encounter with Amalek, the Amalekite king, and Samuel's failure to capture him. The first word of that Haftarah passage, Zachor, lends its name to the day, and we have Shabbat Zachor, the Shabbat of remembrance. Another example, the Haftarah on the Shabbat between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur begins with the word Shuba to return. And thus we have Shabbat Shuba, the Shabbat of return and repentance. It is important to note, not all Jewish communities share the same selections of Haftarah for each Shabbat or even each holiday nor do they share the same rituals surrounding the reading. As is often the case, different customs and traditions dictate it, dictating if and when and which Haftarah port passages are to be read. Interested in hearing what the prophets have to say? Take a look. Their ancient words may still be relevant for us today.